Welcome to Betrayal Recovery Radio, the official podcast of APSATS, the Association of Partners of Sex Addict Trauma Specialists, hosted by Dr. Jake Porter. APSATS is a nonprofit organization providing professional training and compassionate support to partners affected by problematic sexual behavior and betrayal trauma. In each episode, Dr. Jake guides a conversation of enlightening insights and practical tools to empower those affected by sex addiction and betrayal trauma to use their voices and live their values. The mission of Betrayal Recovery Radio is to offer hope to those in need of healing and growth to those moving through grief. And now, here's your host, Dr. Jake Porter. Welcome to another episode of Betrayal Recovery Radio. I am your host, Dr. Jake Porter, and I am grateful that you are joining us today. Well, as we talk about a hard subject, we're going to talk about divorce. And, um, you know, while so many of us, we, we, we don't want uh, divorces, we want to root for marriages, we want to root for relationships to make it, the reality is that some don't. And uh, so that is what we're going to be talking about today. We're, we're going to talk about it from both sides. We're going to talk a little bit about divorce prevention 101. What are some of the very first and most important fundamental things to put into place after the discovery of betrayal so that you and your partner do not head toward divorce, but then also a little bit about what happens if that is the direction things are going, if that is where a relationship ends up, what are the needs there, what are the resources that could be available, and how do you support someone else if you're watching that happen to them? We're going to talk about all of that and more today with uh, Kim Hansen Petroni. Uh, before I introduce her, though, and... Um, launch into that conversation with her. I do just want to make you aware of a few resources, a few opportunities that are available to you now. So first of all, uh, Kim, who's going to be on the show with me here in a moment, is pairing up with Carol, the coach, to offer a Help Them Heal Couples workshop. And this is going to be held live via Zoom on October the 8th. 2022, and you can find out more information about that at sexhelpwithcarolthecoach.com. Go to the workshops tab. You'll find it there. Uh, as far as I know, there are only a couple of spaces left for that, so you'll want to jump on that registration quickly. If you are a coach or a clinician and you are interested in learning more, becoming better equipped to work with individuals and couples who are trying to overcome the consequences of betrayal, I would encourage you to go to appsats.org. Appsats is the Association of Partners of Sex Addict Trauma Specialists. Go to appsats.org and learn about some of their upcoming trainings, both the multidimensional partner trauma model, as well as the ERCOM training. That is the early recovery couples empathy model training. You can find information for those upcoming trainings at that website. And the last resource I want to let you know about is a completely free online summit that I am offering called the Couples Boundaries Summit. And if you go to Boundaries Summit, that's plural boundaries, B-O-U-N-D-A-R-I-E-S, summit, S-U-M-M-I-T dot com, boundariessummit.com, you can sign up and get your free pass. It's going to be on September 17th. Uh, I've got a great um, list of speakers who are going to be giving presentations on that day. You will have access for 12 hours to all of the recordings completely free. There is an opportunity to get a, a lifetime pass if you want to rewatch those and get into some of the bonuses that are being offered. But go to boundariesummit.com and sign up for that completely free resource uh, right now. Okay, let's talk about my guest today. Um, Kim Hansen Petroni is a board certified coach. She is an APSAT certified partner coach. She is ERCOM certified. She holds a master's in counseling from Regent University. She coaches individuals and couples experiencing betrayal trauma. And she also supports women walking through divorce or the possibility of divorce uh, that is related to betrayal. She serves as an educator for clinicians and coaches working with clients who are contemplating divorce as well. Um, her own life took a dramatic turn in 2016, and Kim took that opportunity to obtain her coaching certifications, complete a door of hope training, 
uh, the app sets training, brain spotting, and she created Coaching Hope for You LLC. She's also a member of Christian Sex Addict Specialist International. And while she always has hope for a relationship to survive, we know that the truth is some don't. So no matter what the outcome, she strives to rebuild self-confidence and reignite joy in women as they walk through this healing journey. Uh, Kim is a, is a wonderful uh, professional in this field, and I always enjoy speaking with her. Nothing uh, different about this conversation you're about to get to listen to here as we talk about divorce prevention 101, uh, tips for, for care and support, and um, how to navigate that process. Sit back and listen to my conversation with Kim Hansen Petroni. Welcome, Kim. How are you? Good. Thank you, Jake. I appreciate you being, letting me be here today. Yeah. Thank you for coming on Betrayal Recovery Radio. And uh, I love your topic, um, Divorce Prevention 101. And uh, in what you, you wrote me about the, the topic, you said divorce might seem like the obvious answer when betrayal occurs, but there are ways to save a marriage or relationship if the betrayer and the betrayed partner are willing to step into healing. And uh, this is something I think, if I if I remember right, you're doing a lot more couples work these days since your uh, ERCOM certification. Is that right? How are you enjoying it? That is correct. And I'm actually loving it. Um, the ERCOM modality has really offered me some very specific tools that couples are really embracing immediately. So it's yeah. showing a shift from the first session to the next session of just a 180. It's wow. Thinner. Within one session. That's amazing. Well, I believe it. I mean, it's the power of, of putting empathy in a place and really emphasizing the relationship. So that is, that is excellent. So, um, you, you've got your own story around this and, and you've got your own professional experience around this. Uh, but I wanted to start out by, by talking to you really about, um, how you got to this place, um, sure. and around your own discovery specifically, how did you feel supported when you discovered the infidelity in your own story? Um, the short answer is I didn't. Um, I had been seeing a personal therapist and then my ex, now ex-husband had also been seeing his own therapist. And when the truth kind of started spilling out, I had called my therapist, left her a message. I was like, oh, these awful things have happened. And she never called me back. Um, so yeah. I thought, well, for sure, I should sit in shame. These are awful. There's nobody that's going to help me. Um, so I didn't really feel supported at all. Wow. And and um, th this this may sound like a kind of a harsh question or whatever, but what was it like to walk that path alone? What was that like for it you? It was really dark. One of the things that I talk about when I work with couples is the place where I sat was survival. Everything about me was just, how do I function on a daily basis? How do I get out of bed? How do I actually live my life versus my husband at the time had already learned how to compartmentalize. So his functioning was very different than mine. So I work with partners and try to explain it to the husband that the way I felt, I was in survival mode. I, I didn't have a choice but to try to figure out how to live each moment. Uh, and so to put it in the couples that I work with, when I express it in that blunt contrast, many times the husbands are like, oh, I had no idea that it was that basic. It's just wow. cut and dry. How do I wake up in the morning? Um, wow. So I'm a pretty fiery gal. And <laughs> I did figure out how to wake up in the morning, how to get up. And I did start investigating because I thought I surely can't be the only one. Surely I can't be the only person that's traveling down this path because it's everywhere. I mean, pornography, sex addiction, everything is, yeah. is out there in the world. And I remember one night I was sitting in bed and I was like, there's got to be somebody else out there. And so I just typed in your sexually addicted spouse. And wouldn't you know, wow. Barb Stubbins <laughs> popped right up. And that was sort of my, uh, my uh, starting point. Yeah. And, and the reason why, you know, when we're talking about, Divorce Prevention 101, I think it's helpful to start with your story is because, I mean, and we never know what would have happened, but but we definitely know getting that support early on is going to really increase the chances of a couple being able to make it. Absolutely. Um, 
right? Because when, when you don't have that support and you're just flailing around, you know, <laughs> doing the best you can, mm-hmm. um, there's a lot more damage that happens, especially in those early days. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And, and so then what I'm hearing you say is you, you got some education. I mean, you, you know, sort of a, a divine appointment. What better Google search could you put in there right. uh, and get Barb Steffen's book, find app sats. But there's a lot of stuff um, we have to learn in this journey that, that betrayed partners have to learn in this journey. Um, a few others, you know, uh, if they are coming from a faith community, what do they do with that? And some of the stuff they've been taught around forgiveness, right? Or what's a boundary and how do you set a boundary? Can you talk about some of the, some of the stuff you needed education around for this journey? Well, the first thing was I needed a voice. I needed a space Mm -hmm. to kind of open my mouth. And I didn't even know how to do that because a lot of times these women are coming from relationships where they've been oppressed just by nature of the spouse trying to hide their own um, addiction. And so you, combat that. And then you hear all these things about boundaries. And I was like, I don't have a, what is that? What does that mean? (laughs) And then to try to figure out, okay, if I have a boundary of throwing up there of him speaking kindly to me, well, then comes the next one. What happens if he doesn't? What do you do then? So there's not only the issue of trying to figure out what is a boundary, but then there's got to be a result or consequence or the aftermath of that. So that's just one specific area. Yeah, for that sure. I really need help on. So boundaries are for sure. What I'm trying to think, you know, early on, if, if a couple's trying to uh, do their divorce prevention 101, what are some other things that initially you would say, these are the, some of the first things you need to understand. So yeah. definitely understanding boundaries, uh, how to have a voice, find your voice and have a, have the voice. What else yeah. might you list? One of the other things that when I talk to the coupleship is that the husband has the power, truly has the power to redirect this entire ship. And one of those very specific things, you know, we talk about all the time is empathy. And if the husband doesn't, you know, I'm like, you've got to have empathy. And he looks at me like, oh, what does that mean? What, what is that? How do I do that? And one of the super easy tools that if I had had this, I think it would have made a a huge difference is with the IRCM training and with Help Her Heal and some of the Carol Sheet stuff and the things that you teach as well is to affirm, validate, and then reassure to affirm that the emotions are present with the wife and then to validate it's okay, you should feel this way. And Mm -hmm. then to reassure the partner that here's what I'm doing. I'm doing my 12 steps. I'm going to this counselor. I'm doing all of these things. And just that it's not even like a minute can shift her right. from crisis to okay i can do this yeah yeah so i, I just want to say it back if the one who did the betraying which often will say he and husband but we know it can go either way yeah. uh if the one who did the betraying really tries to latch onto the power of empathy it's a game changer is what Absolutely. you're saying yeah, I agree. And and I heard you just go through uh, Carol, Carol, the coach's AVR, uh, right? And that's such a powerful tool. I want to make sure that the folks who are listening heard that. Can you go through it one more time? AVR, a great way to express empathy for any of you out there needing some help with this. <laughs> go ahead, <laughs> Coach Kim. <laughs> Lay it on us. <laughs> the first is to affirm. Yeah. That's what the A stands for. The V stands for validate. The R stands for reassure. So to affirm, that would be acknowledging that the partner is upset. So you got wife screaming at you. She's really upset. You're like, oh, from the husband's standpoint, partner standpoint, betrayer standpoint. Wow, you look really angry right now. And that brings her into, oh, he's paying attention to me. Right. That's the affirm. Validate. You have every right to feel this way. You have every reason to feel this way. I have been looking at pornography for 20 years. Whatever that is that's caused her this anger to validate, absolutely, you have every right to feel this way. And then to reassure her. Remember that we added um, all of these boundaries on my computer. You've got my phone. You can look at it anytime. Here it is. That reassures her that he's stepping into that healing space. And she doesn't have to be in a fear space or an unsafe location anymore. She can sit and go, okay, he's he's right here yeah. next to me. We're working this out. 
Yeah, and folks, listen, if you're if you're hearing that for the very first time, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, come on, it can't be that simple. Can't, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it is so powerful. But I will add one little dimension to it. You know, if you're going to try it, think about how Kim was saying that, right? You know, sure, you can look at my phone. Of course, if you need access, not here, you can look at my phone, right? Right. Right. right? Yeah. I always tell guys, if you're learning empathy, um, you have to, you have to own the fact that yes, your words are communicating something, but your tone of voice, facial expression, whether your eyes are soft or hard, your body posture, the distance between you and the person you're speaking to, that all is sending a message as well. And you're 100% responsible for that message also. So exactly. that can help really yeah, make point. it work. But yeah, super, super powerful yeah. tool. Um, so, so empathy early on as a game changer, and that really is what the Urkel model is, is based. In fact, the, the word empathy is in the name, early recovery couples empathy model. Um, yeah, anything else you can think of like education wise that early on a couple would need to know if they're hoping for divorce prevention? Um, podcasts. Podcasts, oh. listening to podcasts, discussing them with each other. I'll recommend to couples listen to them either separately or together and then talk about what did you learn from it? What are you mm -hmm. taking from this podcast? Don't just listen to them independently. Yeah. But podcasts are really easy, especially at the very beginning. Many partners are who are experiencing trauma can't read mm. because their right. brains are so shot. And right. to give them all of these books and these reading things, they can't read either. So to be able to offer them edu something that they can listen to is a big deal. Um, any yeah. kind of books that are audible for the wife to be able to listen to, he can, you can get one copy and let him read it if he can read. Um, but for her, that's to know that he's coming beside her educationally is a big deal. I think. Yeah. Like joining her in the journey. He yeah. cares about it too. Um, yeah. And that also, it really does go a long way. I, and you know, as I've, I've worked with many, many, many couples at this point and often th they're, they're wired very differently. I often say to couples, did you know your brains are different? And one way that they're different is often uh, the one who's been betrayed is seeking, 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 seeking more information because it's a safety issue. And the one who did the betraying can be resistant because that very same stuff incites shame, yep. right? Yeah. In the one who did the betraying. Um, do you have any advice for those, those folks who, you know, okay, they'd like to listen to this podcast with their wife or with their husband, but man, it's, it just brings up so much, so many reminders of what they've done and, and their shame. What, what would you say to that person? Three things come to my mind. Okay. The first, and I don't know if you can download it at the end of this, but the first is you have a little video that's like five or six minutes long. It's called Betrayal Trauma Brain. Yeah. All of my clients have to watch that. The we second will, is, uh, we'll, we'll put the link in the show notes for anyone listening. <laughs> Go ahead, Kim. The second is the coaster video that you also have, encouraging him mm. to be present while she heals. And the third is the recognition that the wife would not be here if she didn't hope and pray with every parcel of her being that this marriage be saved. That's mm -hmm. where everything's going in spite of her trauma. And that for the husband's just to remember she's here because she loves me and she wants this to work with everything that she has. And yeah. that's where I've heard, I've even heard you say it. You either choose the marriage and the wife or you choose your shame. And we want her to right. choose the marriage and the wife. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Those are good. And we will make sure all those links are posted in the show notes uh, to all that stuff. And, and you know, as as I'm hearing you, you talk there, Kim, that last point um, where you said remembering that she's still here, remembering that that person you betrayed is still in the relationship, fighting for the relationship. And I off one of the ways I say that is I call that the connection reframe, reframe the connection reframe, because no matter what the trigger is, if we, we go down beneath the surface of the behavior and the words in that moment and go all the way down to the very bottom tip of that iceberg, that trigger is ultimately about 
the fear of loss of the relationship or the pain of disconnection. And so if I move further away, when my wife is triggered, I'm actually like, you know, throwing gasoline on the fire. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so, and be, so somehow remembering this is ultimately about connection because she wants mm -hmm. connection. Super, super helpful and grounding. Yeah. Um, so that's all some really good advice, empathy and podcasts and, you know, AVR is a great tool. How about some bad advice? Uh, <laughs> oh, did you ever get some bad advice have. along the way? <laughs> did you ever get any bad advice along the way? And what, what would you caution folks against? Um, it's not your fault. There's nothing that you did. Um, more sex is not going to make it go away. Um, forgiveness just doesn't work. Um, forgive and then trust. It, it, you, it's, I, I just don't even know where to start with that one, Jake. It's, you well, know, I, if, like, let, me, let me boil it down. Let me boil it down too, because mm -hmm. a lot of women, once they get to this point, they've been told all of this noise and we're teaching them to start trusting their intuition, their gut, that pit of their core being. And I think what I would boil it down to is that if there's something within your very core that says, mm, it does not feel right. I don't know if I can do that, but that's probably bad advice. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. And, and I want to go back to the forgiveness thing that you were, you were mentioning because, it, and I, I go back there because it really is so uh, prevalent, yeah. you know, in comments I get from, yeah, in faith-based communities mm -hmm. and in, you know, comments that I get from listeners to this show, you know, that just forgive, just forgive, just forgive. And it, we can just kind of riff on this a little bit, Kim, for a minute. Um, number one, you know, I would say you can't forgive if you don't know what you're forgiving. True. Right. And does that mean you have to know every single little gritty detail? No, but generally, right. Like what am I, what, what happened here? Um, and then, and then secondly, and you mentioned this as well, that I think there's a huge difference between forgiving someone and trusting them again. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. It's, yeah. um, I'm trying to think of an example. It's kind of like you can forgive let me use an alcoholic. Like you can forgive your husband for coming home and drinking, having drank a beer if he's a recovering alcoholic. That's one thing. But to trust that he's going to exit the home and not drink again, that's a very different process. It's very different. Um, so, yeah. 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 When when uh, the folks I'm working with, like if a uh, uh, – say a, a guy did the, who, who betrayed, he's having a hard time with this. She hasn't forgiven me. You know, I'll often, I'll say, well, let's imagine that you have a business partner, mm -hmm. you know, you, you all own a company 50, 50 and, you know, things just aren't quite adding up, aren't quite adding up. And then you find out that for the last three years, he's embezzled, you know, a million and a half dollars and yeah. he's stolen that from you. You could forgive him. Does that mean you have to go right back into business with him and act like it never happened? Right. It's, it's two different, two different things. Um, forgiveness and reconciliation are different. Absolutely. I would say. Yep. Yeah. I'm trying to think any other really bad advice you, Oh, you, one you mentioned, uh, more sex, more sex will fix it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. It's not so everywhere. much. Everywhere. It's just not, uh, uh, it just doesn't work. <laughs> um, yeah. And in fact, yeah, our first really, advice is 90 days of abstinence though. So. You know, to try to kind of get everything sure. foggy to help everything out a little bit. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, okay. How how do you know when enough is enough? Mm. It varies from couple to couple. And that enough is enough is a debatable question, too. What I find for most of my women is that the women that I coach and the couples is that there's like an internal shift. I talked about their intuition and that gut feeling is that women will just find this internal shift of <clears throat> boundaries are not being honored. Um, I can't take it anymore. It's not because that they see something in the future that's better, 
it's because they are absolutely in a hopeless space right now of having fought a battle that it's not producing anything. And that enough is enough. I'd say nearly all of the wives that I work with do not want to step into a divorce space. And the way that I rephrase it is because they've worked so hard to try to honor this marriage is that we're going to take a step aside from the marriage and you can create boundaries that keep you financially safe, that keep you emotionally safe, that comes with that big D word of divorce. But you're going to honor your own integrity and you're going to step over here and we're going to see what he does hmm. for a while. And if yeah. you take that process and you go down that path and you divorce yourself legally as a method of protection for you, your kids, your family, whatever, then we sit back and we watch him and we see how he's going to proceed. Is he going to be honorable and take those steps and realize, oh, she's really serious here. Um, I need to take care of me because she can't do it anymore. That's the enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Everything that she's done said, it just, it doesn't help anymore. Yeah. Wow. And that's a particularly uh, tender and vulnerable place yep. for a betrayed partner yep. to step into that space and go into that wait and see. Mm -hmm. In that specific um, sort of season, what what's helpful support look like? You know, dur just during that season, you know? One, I love working with partners that are going through divorce because not because they're choosing divorce at all, but because they have, I understand the path that they've been taught to go through their path through this therapeutic environment of trying to save their marriage is speak your truth, trust your gut, be honorable, trust, learn, learn to retrust and reframing all these boundaries. When in fact, once they step into divorce, it's like a 180. You don't speak your truth. You don't trust your gut. You do all of these things that are mandated by a courtroom that's very, very different than what you've already learned. And it takes a unique perspective to be able to step into that space of trauma that they're already in and be able to work with them and kind of um, coddle is not the right word, but it's just to love on them and to bring them gently into this new space of understanding mm -hmm. what they've been taught and not going to work this time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, and, and what would you say? So we get a lot of listeners who aren't just the betrayed partners, right? A lot of those who did the betraying, um, listen as well. So let's say there's someone out there listening and maybe their partners, they, they just stepped into that space of saying they're moving toward divorce. What would be some words you'd share with that person? That's a great question. That's where the divorce prevention 101 comes into play. Because I work with these women that are leaving these environments, I want husbands to understand how excruciatingly devastating it is. Husbands may sit in a space of shame of their own addiction, but what they do when they decide that this marriage is, is not going to work or they're, they're not honoring their wives is to know that they're taking this umbrella of shame and now they are putting it right on their wife. So everything that they have had to go through, now the wife is sitting in a space of, who do I tell that my husband's an addict? I can't tell anyone. Now I'm trying to find yeah. an attorney to help me out. I, I don't know. I'm emotionally unstable. I want the husbands to understand. It's not, they don't, they don't want to be over there. It's not an easy path. Divorce is not easy. So I want mm -hmm. them to see how dark and heavy it is before they decide that it's too much. And, and what do they then do with that awareness? So let's say they get a glimpse. Uh -huh. Oh, that is dark and heavy. Uh -huh. Wow. She, she really doesn't want to be there. Yeah. What do they do with that? You start, you jump into therapy and you do everything that your wife is asking you to do it. And you do it with honor and integrity. And you just decide exactly what um, you teach people is to choose the marriage over the shame. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, in fact, it happened just this past week. There was a couple here and very understandably, the wife was like, I'm done. You know, like I'm done. Yeah. I'm here, uh, because I want some healing and I know we have to co-parent and, you know, I want that to go well for our kids, but I'm done. But the way this guy engaged in 
the process here when they were here for an intensive. It was funny. I, I, I didn't point it out at first. By the last day, I was kind of teasing her a little bit because she was saying things about a future and all that. But I think it's because he was all in. I mean, it was like obvious. He was suiting up, showing up. Yep. He wasn't in victim mentality mm -hmm. over her voicing that she wanted a divorce. Because that's what I often see is, right, they, they're trying, they're trying, they're trying, trying, you know, uh, and maybe they really are, but it becomes in, uh, intolerable for the betrayed partner. They say they're done. And then all of a sudden the other person reacts like they're the victim. Oh, I did all this. Well, that's just a sure way to guarantee yeah. the, <laughs> the end, right? Well, and that affirms her intuition, her gut. Uh, well, exactly. Well, really not in this. She's in it for the checking off the boxes. Yeah. 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 See there. Oh, I was right to make that call. Yep. And so really being able to be that consistent, steady, stable. No, I'm I want what's best for you and for us, uh, even after the partner has said I'm done, yep. because it's not over till it's over. Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's not over till it's over. Um, So you why why do you spend time? focusing on divorce in your own practice and in your own story? Well, my own story is that um, I started a, a saying, and Donna Dixon gets credit for this. I went through a, an organization called Adore of Hope and trained yes. to be a group facility. Love Donna. I do too. One of her trainings, I <laughs> talked about uh, divorcing partners. We're not, we're not casserole widows, but we're widows. We've lost our husbands. And it was fully brought to my own personal attention when I was going through a divorce and in my church, a pastor died out of the blue mm. for, I think they have five kids, beloved man, just, it was mm. tragic. And I yeah. watched our pair, the wife who is the widow and my path parallel each other. And when he passed, the church filled up, the church repaired her home, the church sent her camp pastor wolves, the church loved all over her. And I was sitting in the same space, four kids, the house needed some dramatic changes, issues in it. I was trying to get them to all kinds of different places. I didn't have that same support. And I really want to help the faith-based community and people just in general understand that when there's a divorce of this type, they need the same exact attention and support the widows. We're actually, as a faith-based community, we're supposed to support widows no matter what. And so I went through that phase and then I entered into a courtroom um, for my own divorce trial and I was just treated horrific. And when I walked out of that, it was a game changer for me. I walked out of there and said, there's no other woman on the face of the planet that needs to do this by themselves. And I have a perfectly wow. unique perspective to try to help. So yeah. that kind of put me into a very clear space. My mind is good when it comes to documentation, helping women and how they with attorneys, legal stuff. So it's, it, it's a good fit for me. And then to be able to prevent it is even better. So sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm, I want to start on the second part of what you said and just any listeners out there, if you are having trouble navigating, uh, the court system, not necessarily from that legal perspective. Mm -hmm. Well, some of it is legal, but I just, I do know that Kim has a lot of experience both personally and working with others on really it's about advocating, right? Exactly. Advocating for yourself within yep. the legal system. Yep. And, um, Kim has some great resources and has done some great work on that. And her contact information is obviously in the show notes here, but on that first piece, you, you likening, you know, the person going through divorce from the person who's just, you know, whose husband has just died and the church's contrasting responses there. Um, they're both griefs. You know, I, that's what I want to say. It's like clinically, if you look at the definition of a grief, uh, a loss becomes a grief when the world as you know it has shifted mm -hmm. in such a significant way that you've got to reformulate your world and your place in the world. And absolutely that's that. Yeah. That's the loss of a spouse, but that's the loss uh, of a marriage as well. And, um, you know, and then just to kind of top yeah, that off too, but, because not only do you have betrayal, you have the grief of the right. betrayal and now we're going to top it off with divorce. This adult right. Miami, 
So these women it's are huge. just like, now what do I do? Yeah. And the, the technical term for this is disenfranchised grief, right? Okay. So it's grief mm -hmm. that we don't, there's no cultural script for that, right? Yep. When someone dies, we have a script for that, right? A few days later, we're going to do a viewing and then a, and then a, some sort of memorial service and then go to the graveside and then there's going to be a meal afterwards at the church or what, you know, whatever it is, but there's no script for, um, the woman who is finally after, you know, maybe a year's long fight of, for her marriage, taking a step toward divorce and moving into single parenthood and all that. And, and I'm, I'm, I am headed somewhere with, with this headed to a question because when I've talked with folks, I'm even thinking about back before I did this work clinically and I was a pastor and these things would happen. People don't know what to say. Sometimes they just, you know, they're like, I don't know what to say. I don't want to bring up something that's painful. That's none of my business. You know, they have those thoughts. What, what would you encourage someone to say? How do they break that ice? You know, let's say there's a woman in their congregation who sits three rows up and they've noticed the husband hasn't been there in a while. And they, they've heard through the grapevine that, that maybe they're getting a divorce. Yeah. What, what do you do? Do you tap them on the shoulder Sunday morning and what help us out? Tap them on the shoulder, give them a hug. I'm praying for you. Thank you. I've heard. What do you need? I'm bringing you a meal. Um, anything to make you not feel like an alien in a space that you're supposed to feel extraordinarily safe. Yeah. Anything works, quite frankly. Thank you. Thank you. It's pretty simple. Pretty simple. Uh, where can our communities um, lead couples to find support? Like folks who are listening right now, maybe they need it themselves or they know someone who does. Where can they find help? So what kind of support are you referring to uh, su support uh well let's go both routes for themselves individually or uh for the relationship like they're trying to find their way like what are some resources where are some places they can go well easy resources for the relationship are the app sets obviously because that's why we're here also we are doing a carol the coach has brought me under her wing and is allowing me to co-host a um workshop that we're doing for couples to sort of dive into her recent book, Help Them Heal. And we're gonna offer actual activities that are within the book to really give, we're gonna do AVR, and to really give everybody some opportunities to practice what's within the book so that you don't take this nice book and it's overwhelming and how do we make it work? It's huge. It is. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's a key for But them. it's good. Exactly. Yeah, for sure, um, for yeah. sure. And of course, I also work with couples to try to help the Urca modality. And I do also sponsor just a workshop for my top 10 divorce keys for betrayed partner. It's unique because it's for betrayed partners. It's just not a random workshop. Yeah. Um, so I do that. And yeah. of course I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with women as well. Okay. Excellent. Let's go back to the workshop you're doing with uh, Carol, the coach. When is that? Is that online? online um, through Zoom. I want to say it's October 8th, which is a Saturday. Okay. And we'll have a link to that. We'll put a link to that down in the, in the uh, show notes as well. And all of Kim's contact information will be there. So Kim, um, before we wrap up here, I just like to give guests an opportunity to give some final words of encouragement, strength, hope to listeners who are maybe going through this situation right now. What would you say both to the one who did the betraying and to the one who was betrayed? All right, I'll start with the one who did the betraying is to always remember that she's present for a reason and that you mm. carry the power and the ability to really direct this and save this relationship. It can be done. It really can be. And um, for the woman or the partner who's been betrayed is to let them trust their gut, trust your intuition and, and stay on that path. Use your voice, speak your truth. The marriage can be saved. And then for those who are divorcing is there is hope, even though it's really black right now. And as a coach, you know, we always want to ask them, where do you see your future? What do you see yourself in three months? And women that come to me in this dark space, are like, I don't know, it's black. So yeah. within a few sessions, we can really redirect them just so they can see the pinpoint. But it's up. That's great. That's wonderful. 
Kim, thank you so much for your time and for all the work that you do. I appreciate you coming on Betrayal Recovery Radio. Thanks, Jake. It was, it was fun to be here. Thank you so much. It's always fun to talk with you. All right. Have a good one. Thanks, you too. You've been listening to Betrayal Recovery Radio, the official podcast of APSAS. If you've received help or hope from this episode, I encourage you to share it with someone you know. If you've not yet done so, please subscribe to our podcast on your favorite listening platform. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dr. Jake Porter, and you can always email me directly at jake at appsats.org. I'd love to hear your ideas, questions, or comments about the show. Until next time, keep choosing to use your voice and live your values. It's good for you and for this world.